there are two main concerns in the connection of ordinary parallax with what we come to identify as a second parallax lying in the first. The theoretical issue has to do with the fact that the second parallax is actually logically primary, and even foundational, for what we take to be the parallax of everyday reality. The orthographic has two meanings. First, it is the idea of a correct relationship, based on the root term orthos. Second, it is used to designate a right angle, an angle at 90 degrees, so it's also about the possibility of a z dimension in the space created by an x and a y, a projective vector that connects the viewer with the viewed. We can hardly imagine a condition where we could see something that we couldn't really see, but the Ames window experiment subtracts from what we think we see. It is about what happens when the z dimension is not allowed to have its usual freedom of movement which is the chance to see if a 3D thing is really 3D. A trapezoid can be dressed up to look like a window in perspective so that, when we see it from either side, either edge looks like the edge that is closest to us. This converts a rotation of the trapezoid appear to be a back and forth motion instead of a rotation, and we can play with this effect by placing an object running through one of the window panes that will appear to revolve rather than move back and forth. The effect is particularly strong when we see the trapezoid end on, when we think we are seeing the same edge, but in fact are seeing both edges in succession. This lets us think about the issue of orthographics, because we have a right angle relation to the picture plane that holds our view in place as the trapezoid plays its tricks, and when we see the window full on, we see the ruler edge on. Because the actual flat trapezoid of the Ames window is already in perspective, Although it's on a flat plane orthogonal to our line of view, when we place it perspectively, the short end will continue to be read as the short end, and we will never think that we are seeing the far edge, only the leading edge. This makes the rotating window appear to be oscillating side to side, although it's really rotating. An object placed at a right angle to the window will not oscillate, however. So we will have the uncanny experience of seeing the ruler penetrate the plane of the window as it continues to rotate, while the window moves right to left, left to right. All of this happens at a very deep place within our neural networks, a place where the brain's cognitive functions compete with the vagus nerve to control our sense of what's happening. This immediacy is what makes this illusion able to say something about the expressive function of consciousness where we attribute motive and intentionality to the object world. The term isomeric was first used to describe the relation between the two extreme states in the theory of humors. To be healthy and orthographically correct, you had to find the isomeric balance point between hot and cold and wet and dry for the three humors, sanguine, choleric, and phlegmatic. The only problem was with melancholy, where even the tiniest bit of black bile was poisonous. This was the odd, humor, out, but it showed how the isonomeric or isonomic point in the other humors was not a balance point, but actually a combination, or exchange of opposites, each tempering the other, so that, for example, in the case of blood, wet and hot, you needed a bit of the phlegmatic humor to keep your friendliness within bounds, so that you would be prudent while, for example, you were falling in love. The isomeric is about the complexity of balance, and the impossibility of defining it as a simplistic kind of division. Melancholy is the key. It teaches the other humors how to behave, but it itself is isolated. It is the teacher who teaches because she can't practice, and when we see her represented, as in the magical engraving by Dura, her tools lie on the ground and puzzles of time and space are displayed all around. The isomeric point is critical whenever popular culture wishes to employ projective geometry to make something funny. In this scene from Chaplin's film, The Circus, a chase that begins as linear becomes topological as soon as the tramp and the policemen hop onto a turntable that the clowns had been using as a part of their act. In this new space, being further away from the policeman in the front means being closer to him at the back, so we have a kind of Ames window condition where the turntable's rotation is like the ruler that goes 360 degrees, but the chase itself appears to oscillate between the values of closer and further away. The self-intersection of the chase converts the linear model to an alternating current that is non-orientable, and with these two qualities we have, effectively, the definition of the pure, projective, plane. 